bind is a generic sort of umbrella term that we use to describe a binding partner. If this binding partner is for an enzyme and this enzyme actually uses that binding partner as sort of starting material and acts upon it to change it in some way, we call it a substrate. So this ligand is a more generic term and substrate is when we're talking about the like starting material that's binding to an enzyme. So one of these reaction helpers or mediators. So ligand and enzyme Ligand and substrate are the two main terms that we use to describe binding partners, but there are also a bunch of other terms we can use in order to further characterize and classify and describe these different binding partners. So for example, when we're talking about receptors, we might be talking about agonists, things that bind to a receptor and activate it, or antagonists, um, things that bind to a receptor and prevent the agonist from binding, and therefore they're kind of like decreasing the activity of the receptor. There's also like more complicated things like inverse agonists, which actually prevent the um, normal activity of the of like the constitutional activity of the receptor so basically receptors are typically on the surface of cells and they can bind to a ligand from the outside so an extracellular ligand and then this ligand can bind to the receptor cause the receptor to change shape a little um, what we call a conformational change and relay this signal into the inside of the cell which can then cause this like signaling cascades and all sorts of various things if the, the ligand binds to the to the receptor and it causes the receptor to be activated, we call it an agonist. If it binds to the receptor and it prevents that agonist from binding, well now it's an antagonist. In terms of agonist and antagonist, you often see these terms used in pharmacology when we're talking about things like pharmaceutical or non-pharmaceutical drugs. And so these receptors have their natural ligands, the things that they normally bind to. These are like endogenous things, things that your cells make for themselves. So we can talk about endogenous and exogenous, much more on this in other posts. But endogenous is something that's already like in there, so your body's already making it for itself. These can be things like hormones um, and other signaling molecules. Whereas exogenous is something external that's added, maybe something like a drug that you ingest or food that you eat. For example, my favorite antagonist is caffeine. So caffeine binds to adenosine receptors. So adenosine is basically like part of ATP and it has these specific receptors in your brain cells that when adenosine binds to these receptors, it kind of causes a bunch of things, but it causes, at the end result, you kind of get drowsy. And so caffeine binds to those receptors, it kind of mimics the adenosine, but it, does, it doesn't activate them. So it's acting as an antagonist, it's preventing those receptors from being activated. And in this way, it's preventing them from making you drowsy. And so caffeine is acting as an antagonist. And in this case, it's an exogenous antagonist because our body's not making it, we're taking it from outside. Um, whereas adenosine would be the natural or endogenous substrate. But we can also say add adenosine from outside and then we would call it exogenous. So endogenous is something that is already in there. Um, the body's making it for itself. Um, and then exogenous is something extra that's added which may or not, may not be the natural sub, the natural ligand for that binding site. But it's basically with the antagonist, you're typically just like, just blocking the site. But there are also things called inverse agonists, where basically the receptors can have sort of like baseline activity, like constitutive, constitutive activity, where they don't need to be activated in order to be doing things. And so an inverse agonist is going to be able to act on those receptors and kind of dampen the activity even if that receptor isn't activated because the receptor doesn't need to be activated, at least in order to have partial activity. Things can get a lot more tricky in terms of terminology when we're dealing with receptor ligands um, because Sometimes these agonists or these antagonists can be partial, so they might not fully um, dampen the activity or they might only partially activate it. And so then whether they're activating or deactivating is going to depend on how much activity there was in the beginning. Um, and then you can also have things like 
the same ligand is acting on multiple different receptors and then based on which receptors it's acting you get different responses and even you can get different responses from the same receptor depending on the circumstances and the cell type so it gets really really complicated i'm not going to go into all of that but the basic idea is that an agonist is something that's going to activate and an antagonist is something that is going to prevent the activation and an inverse agonist is something that's going to decrease the like basal or the constitutive activity of the receptor. So the reactivity that's there, even if you don't have any activating ligand present, even if there's no agonist present, just like the basic activity that this, that this receptor is always going to be having, um, the inverse agonist could dampen that, whereas the um, antagonist would, would not dampen that, it would just prevent further activation above that. Now let's talk about with with enzymes, they're often, we have the substrate, which is the thing that the enzyme is acting upon, but there are also other things that can bind to an enzyme, such as cofactors, which are kind of like little helper molecules that can, that can bind. Sometimes enzymes need helper molecules in order to function, so they need those cofactors. We can talk about the enzyme by itself without the cofactor as the apoenzyme, and with the cofactor as the holoenzyme, so the whole thing. We can further classify those cofactors as things that are inorganic, so non hydrocarbon based and things that are organic. And so the inorganic things, these include metals. And so some enzymes need metals and then we call these metalloenzymes. In terms of those organic things, so with organic, we're talking about hydrocarbon based things. So most of the things that we talk about in biochemistry are going to be organic. And often we can talk about these like small organic compounds that are going to bind to and work with enzymes. Sometimes, often these are like vitamins. Um, so vitamin B12 and vitamins, B, lots of different vitamins. Um, I can't think off the top of my head, um, but these can act to help enzymes work. If these, if these binding parts, if these um, co factors are kind of like coming and going, we call those coenzymes. Whereas if those like are permanently stuck, we call these prosthetic groups. So those are different terms we can use to describe cofactors. We can also talk about the binding locations of substrates on enzymes, and in this case, we typically are talking about the active site. So the active site is where the substrate is going to bind on an enzyme and where that enzyme is then going to act on it. Now, the active site is often the place where we have competitors and things like that bind, but not necessarily. Those things can also bind to other sites, what we call allosteric sites, which are sites other than the active site, um, and these binding to those other sites is going to kind of cause the enzyme to change shape and affect its activity, maybe affect the way that the active site is shaped to make it so that it doesn't bind to the substrate as well and that sort of thing. So we can have this sort of like direct um, inhibition at that binding site as well as like allosteric inhibition, allosteric modulation and things like that. A ligand is binding to the same site as like the normal site to the active site. Um, we can also talk about it as an orthosteric binding. So allosteric it's binding somewhere else, orthosteric it's binding at that active site. There are other terms we can use if we're talking specifically about the ligands or the binding partners for antibodies. So these little proteins made by the immune system that bind to and recognize foreign things. The thing that the, the ligand for this antibody, we call it an antigen. So an antigen is something that the antibody binds to. And more specifically, we can talk about the exact site on the antigen where the antibody's binding. We call that the epitope. So the epitope is the part of the thing, the, the, the part of the antigen, so the part of the binding partner that is actually the specific part that the antibody binds to. Oh, that was a lot of terms, so let's do a quick review. So ligand is just a generic term that we can use to describe a binding partner. If that binding partner is for a enzyme, and if that enzyme is actually modifying that binding partner, then we call it a substrate. So the substrate is a ligand that the enzyme is actually acting on. Now, if the enzyme is 
also binding to other things, say helper molecules, we call these cofactors, and then there are various types of cofactors we can further subclassify them. In terms of receptors, the ligands for receptors, we can talk about, classify them based on whether they activate or deactivate the receptor, or like prevent it from being activated. So an agonist is something that activates the receptor, an antagonist is something that prevents the receptor from being activated, and an inverse agonist is something that prevent that like lowers the activity of the like empty receptor so if that receptor has constitutive or baseline activity in the absence of an agonist the inverse agonist is able to reduce that activity whereas the antagonist is just preventing it from getting activated now when we talk about binding partners of antibodies, we call these binding partners antigens. And specifically, we call the part of the antigen where the antibody is binding an epitope. So an epitope is the part of the antigen that the antibody is binding to. In terms of where things bind elsewise, and when we talk about enzymes, the substrate, so the thing that the enzyme is acting on is binding in the active site where the action is actually taking place. You can have other binding sites for other molecules that the enzyme is binding, but where the activity is actually going to happen is in that active site. Often this is the site where, like say, inhibitors are bound, bind to. And so those types of inhibitors we would call orthosteric if they're binding in the active site, and we call them allosteric if they're binding elsewhere. 